So a while back, I got in a conversation with a couple of guys I know, in one of the discords I'm in, that, about combat mechanics, how the different ships interplay and interact with one another and get dangerous. And one of the universally agreed upon themes is that the Type 10 is probably one of the worst ships in the game. And different people will provide different reasons for why this is the case. But it usually comes down to a combination of it turns too slow, or it can't get all its weapons on target, or um, in the case of Thargoid fights, it just can't keep up with the engagement, period. And I, I have a lot of questions too in, in terms of AX, or a lot of issues with the way that weapons are set up in AX combat that I can get into later. Um, I don't have a problem with the mechanics of AX combat itself, I think that they're not quite giving us the tools that we need, or rather I should say the tools that they're giving us aren't being used the way that FF expected and they're not adapting to the way the community is applying their resources. There are entire groups of weapons in AX combat that are left out of the game and for, for similar reasons actually uh, to why the Type 10 has been essentially left out of all practical engagements and Elite Dangerous. Most people who fly it fly it as a meme or as a stopgap on their way to something bigger. There are a couple of guys who get into combat training, and it's a, you know, it's a passable mining ship, but outside of a couple of specific niche roles, the ship is just nowhere near as prolific. Um, and that's a shame, because I actually like it. I think that the Type 10 has a lot more personality than any of the other big ships, except for maybe the Anaconda. The Cutter and the Corvette are so role-specific and defined that it's, I don't... I, I guess I sound like I'm dumping on them, but I'm actually not. The Type 10 on paper, the way that FDEV presents it, is a ship that should work. I mean, the, the idea of it, the role that it's supposed to slot into and fulfill, the, the concepts behind how this thing is supposed to be used, they all make sense on paper. Lay this thing out on a spreadsheet and it slots in pretty nicely with the other large class ships as a, a massive source of outgoing DPS. But it's not being used at all. I mean, the ship's ostensibly a combat vessel. Most of the people I see use it are using it to mine, or occasionally I'll see guys just load it up with pack hound launchers and go out and blow stuff up in open play. It's not a particularly effective way of doing things, although, to be fair, I have a Type 10 that is set up this way, and it is an ear to ear smiling, fun thing to use, especially when you have a gunner who is immune to target lock breaker that can just fire on anything at any angle. Because people don't, don't know that, but missile racks actually work really well in a gunner seat, and you can use them to incredible effect. But it's also one of the few things that the Type 10 can apply very well to put out the kinds of damage that it needs in order to be effective. And then there's a lot of uh, really high-level detail I can get into about turrets and the mechanics behind how damage changes when you use them, all of which are intended to incentivize people for trying to play higher skilled tiers. That's why fixed weapons do more damage, You're trying to reward people for being good at the game. It's not a bad thing, um, but it's a very defensive approach to game design. It's trying so hard to keep combat engagements in Elite Dangerous, quote, fair and balanced, that it's actually creating imbalances that have contributed to making ships like the Type 10 mostly irrelevant in combat situations. So uh, what am I referring to? Well, the first problem is that the Type 10 is the biggest, heaviest, slowest ship in the game. Its turn rates are worse than any other ship. Its um, time on target capacities are extremely limited unless you're using turrets, which I'll get to in a second. And its canopy is huge, making it an easy target if somebody really wanted to shoot it out. Although, I gotta give credit where it's due. Despite running in occasionally with shieldless type 10s, I've never had the cockpit on this thing shot out. Then again, I've never tried to take a type 10 into PvP, because I basically know how that particular stunt's gonna end. I've only ever seen one player in all of YouTube use a type 10 in PvP very well, and he tongue-in-cheekedly admitted that it was a really bad option if only because there were a lot of better ones available in the large ship class, the Cutter and the Corvette, namely being two easy examples. One being the best shield tank, and the other being probably the most maneuverable of the... Well, actually, 
actually, not probably. It is the most maneuverable of the large ships, making it a favorite for PvP combat, if only because it's easier to keep time on target. The Type 10 gets none of these advantages, and even in its description, when you read about what the ship is and what it does, it, it admits these things. And then it practically begs you to make up the difference by using turrets. And I'll actually give, I'll give you a quick picture of the outside. I don't know how well this is going to show up. The Type 10 is one of the few ships in the game that it really complements the use of turrets. It's asking you to use them because it offers turrets an unobstructed dorsal view of the entire engagement. A 180 degree, well, actually, the 360 degree firing arc with perfect unobstructed access to anything above you and down here, anything below you. The, the Type 10's capacity to engage multiple targets at one time and to defend itself with turrets is impressive, but there's a reason why you never see it used like this. Most people I see use Type 10's in any kind of, especially against Thargoids, engagement is the, when they're using gimbaled weapons. And that's because of one reason, one reason only. Let me bring this up here. Turrets in Elite Dangerous are the lowest DPS version of any particular weapon that supports them. To give you an example here, this Type 10 that I'm flying in game right now is equipped with burst lasers because they're the highest DPS laser variant that this ship can drive stock. Well, not stock, that this ship can drive. Put my window back up here. But to give you just an example of how gimped weapons um, that use turret mounts are, um, note the DPS here is 11. If I switch it to the fixed variation of the burst laser, it's 20.8. Turrets deal half the damage of their fixed weapon counterparts. Gimbals take a hit too, but it's not as severe, 16. So uh, the gimbaled variant does five more damage per second than the turreted variant, which is significant, especially when you talk about time on target. And the logic behind doing it this way for, for game balance purposes is to try to reward players for being more skilled, for, for taking time to practice, for taking time to apply targeted systems and, and learn how the ships work so that they can keep their fixed weapons on target. And I love that idea for things like the Vulture, but here's the problem. This is not a Vulture. Uh, this does not have the maneuverability to do the kinds of things that the game developers were expecting people to do with fixed weapons. Which kind of bums me out, because it means that, that for one thing, if you want to use this Type 10 the way it practically begs you to use it, you have to, to accept a 50% damage reduction right off the top. And that's before you even start getting into it to wobble an effect applied to gimbals and turrets that causes the frame to not quite acquire a perfect lock on the target. And you'll note in engagements that your targeting reticles will kind of skitter across the surface of the target no matter how it's oriented to you. And that really starts to kick you in the balls if you get much farther out than two kilometers. Your weapons will start missing even if the target isn't deploying chaff because the, the wobble just starts to get you at greater and greater ranges, and it's the wobble that, that means that you can't really overcome some of these critical weaknesses. For example, uh, lasers are limited to a three kilometer range, meaning that they're going to apply, that they're not going to be able to target anything and shoot at greater than three kilometers, but the damage fall off sets in at 0.5 kilometers, which is really nasty. Energy weapons are very vulnerable to this. They're very much designed for you to get in close and really get on your target. So how do you make up the difference? Well, um, if you want to make up the difference, you've got two options. You can focus the weapon, which extends the range to six and the fall to one kilometer. The problem being that now your ship wants to shoot at targets that are six kilometers away, and you'll be applying a bare fraction of your already weak, in this case for a gimbaled weapon, 16.6 DPS. But if I switch this back to a turret and apply the same blueprint, Okay, past one kilometer, you're going to be doing progressively less DPS. Now, at six kilometers, you're basically going to be whittling on the target. You'll still generate aggro, but if the target stays that far away, you're going to be applying like one or two DPS on top of the wobble. That means when your turret actually hits the target, you're applying one or two DPS, but most of your shots at six kilometers from experience are missing. 
they're not even hitting what you're aiming at, which means that your effective DPS, the actual damage that you're applying to a target with turrets, is probably less than one. Especially if you're firing at a smaller ship with a weaker profile. Now, I'm not campaigning for pinpoint accuracy at six kilometers, but I am pointing out how complicated this can get, especially when you're dealing with a massive damage nerf on its face that, that just comes in as part of the package. So what's your other option? Well, long range actually increases your applied DPS at extreme ranges by taking away the damage fall, but at six kilometers, if you're firing at a target, you're still going to miss about half everything that you're shooting, which means that your effective DPS is going to be five or six, which is a bummer, because if you're trying to kill a small target or even a medium target at those ranges who's also engaging in evasive maneuvers, your turrets are just not going to cut it especially against ships that have been engineered. So, people who want to construct builds and use them in high intensity situations look at these issues on the Type 10 and, and essentially write the thing off as a joke. Because, I'll show you here, uh, about the most DPS that I've seen a Type 10 apply in this case, just, I'm just going to slap this on real quick. All burst lasers. Go down to the offense profiles in Coriolis and see that Overall, sustained DPS is 58.1. And that's assuming that the thing that you're firing at is inside of a half a kilometer and somehow you've managed to get all of your turrets on target, which a half a kilometer with a Type 10 is, is a pretty flipping tall order. This doesn't generally happen. From experience, you've usually got all of the turrets on your top rack or all the turrets on your bottom rack. Firing on the target, getting everything on target at the same time is just a giant misnomer. So what ends up happening is your actual DPS that you're applying to the target is going to be about half, even if the target is close enough for the weapons that are firing to do their full damage. You're probably going to be floating somewhere in the 30s here. And I can show you just how, how nasty that actually is. 58.1 DPS. Let me go over here and show you one of my other builds. This I call the Fire Ant. This is a vulture with bioweaves and it's designed for PvP. I know a lot of PvP guys will probably cringe when they look at this, but the point of it was to have fun in combat zones. Burst laser, same class of weapon, fixed mount, but with short range to boost the damage because it's a vulture and I can get in close, and inertial impact because it adds another damage boost with 3% jitter, which basically makes the weapon completely unusable at ranges more than about a kilometer. Go down here to Offense, and select, let's see, there it is. Overall sustained DPS. With two fixed burst lasers doing 54.6, I'm matching the damage output of my Type 2. Just two weapons. I'm completely outdoing everything that's on my Type 10. That's assuming all of the, everything's on target. That's a lot of yikes, man. I, and it's depressing to me because it means like, for the amount of effort that I have to pour into the Type 10 to make it even remotely viable, the Vulture can do all of it. 30 million with a 1.5 mil rebuy, which is chump change late game. But if I go over here and I look at... Let's see. I'll go back to my War Ox, which is my Type 10 that I use for extended combat. Hang on, for some reason that keeps not applying. Burst lasers. This is a ship that costs 700 million credits with a 38 million credit rebuy. To do the same amount of damage as a small ship could potentially put out, with, you know, the nominal ability to be able to, you know, fire on something a little bit farther out. You want to talk about broken. The, the Type 10's been left completely out of the party only because the weapons that you would think you could use just aren't usable. So how do you how do you address this issue? Well, this is where people are probably going to get mad at. But honestly, the, the Type 10 
is not the problem, the weapon balance is. Because the, t the Type 10 is the role it's supposed to define. Like, I don't have a problem with the philosophy behind its design. I have a problem with the game's weapon balance not allowing the type of gameplay that this ship was actually built to play. This ship was made to be a turret boat. It was made to park in position and defend something. To not have to maneuver a whole bunch and to be able to apply damage to any target with just about any attack angle. And the game doesn't let you play that role because everybody else is going to be rolling around more damage than you can do. How do you fix it? Well, there are a couple of ways you can fix it. One of the big ways is to address the way that turrets and gimbals work. And I don't actually think you need to change the, the raw damage output of weapon classes. The damage archetypes are fine. Turrets and gimbals need to be brought up to a damage level comparable to fixed weapons. not greater than, maybe not even equal to, but at least somewhere in the ballpark. I actually think, if you go back to Coriolis here, that turrets should be brought up on par or near on par with gimbals. Maybe 14, 15. And I would like to see gimbals brought up closer to where the fixed weapons are. So maybe 18 instead of 20. The PvPers will be mad at me for because they'll say, like, you're taking away the skill element of the game and, and no that's not the point the point is to try to make these weapons relevant so that they get used more but i'm not trying to give people a free lunch instead of gimping the damage output to encourage people to use fixed weapons increase the amount of resources that gimbals and turrets take make them more expensive, not less, because here's the crazy thing about turrets and gimbals, it can be dangerous. As their DPS goes down, so too does their energy draw. So if you look down here, uh, let's see, damage per megajoule of energy, 6.3, go to fixed weapons. The weapon is drawing more power and producing more heat across the board than its turret variant, which produces less than half. Bring that up. Make turrets more expensive per DPS to operate than the fixed variants of their weapons, so that you have to plan your build around them more carefully. It keeps turrets from pervading the smaller and medium class ships, while allowing the large ships the damage edge they need in order to keep turrets relevant, in order to make ships like the Type 10 have a place. The other thing that you need to do, I think, is require ships that use turrets to have a module inside of their loadout that controls the turrets. Like the turrets won't work on their own or will be less effective on their own without something like, let's say, a, a turret control module, maybe a size one or a size three module that you stick in your ship that grants you the ability to define very specific fire control rules and maybe even helps mitigate some of the wobble effect that's been added to turrets to try to draw them in. And this is not to take the skill component away from PvP people. It is to give large ships the ability to care less about their positioning while still being able to apply damage, which is essential for ships like the Type 10, but also for vessels like the Anaconda that have limited steering but still offer, at least on a few of their hard points, a lot of ways for these turrets to apply damage. That helps address the sheer flipping balls-to-the-wall craziness that takes place in PvP with Circle Strafe. Because it means that the Anaconda doesn't have to be on target, something that it's going to struggle with. It just means that it needs to be close. And it also means that the PvP guys need to plan how they're attacking these large ships differently. I actually don't think, as a matter of game balance, that it should be possible for a small ship, under any conditions, to be able to beat a large ship. It should require teamwork. One vulture. In a, uh, against a competently constructed large ship should never, no matter how much engineering that has been put into it, be able to beat the damage output of a large ship. But a medium ship should. It should be difficult. You shouldn't be able to take on a Type 10 without a lot of forethought. And the Type 10 guy should have advantages. He's in a bigger, more expensive ship. In the Type 10's case, its advantage is that it's got turrets. He can fire out on you at any angle. The disadvantage is that he doesn't have engagement control, so the Fertilance can go flipping around off out of range of his turrets and come in for attacks at his own discretion, not without getting harassed. As it stands right now, 
The Type 10 goes and fights a Fertilance. All he has to do to kill it is double pop chat and sit on your ass and drill holes in your back. And then that, that's how these, these fights always end. It's almost impossible for a Type 10 to keep on target well enough, unless he's using turrets. But the turrets are so gimped that you just can't put out enough DPS to beat the regenerate on shields, especially with SCDs. And you get similar problems in Thargoid combat, because the, you're only offered one turret variant that can do meaningful damage to a Thargoid, and that's the Shard Cannon. But the Shard Cannon requires you to be really close to the Thargoid, which can readily outrun the Type 10, meaning that in most engagements, especially with wing, the Wingmen, the Thargoid's never going to be close enough for the Shard Cannons to do anything. So what do you use? Well, you've got AX Multis, but the armor on a Thargoid is so thick that the AX Multis do piss damage, especially as you start getting up into the higher two Thargoids. Once you get to a Hydra, your effective DPS is again down like 5 per second, if even that. And then you've got the Swarm to contend with, which with Type 10 is, is simply not able to deal with the Swarm at all. Even if you have flak launchers on it, you, you're not going to get the Swarm in front of you and be able to put shots on target. You're going to get your ass kicked. And I, and I know from experience, I have a Thargoid variant Type 10 that I've been playing with forever. And I've never been able to get it to do anything more than maybe kill uh, a Cyclops. A, a Type 10 can solo a Cyclops. And that's about it. As soon as you step up to the higher level Thargoids, it just alone it's just not something that happens I think there's one guy in the entire AXI who's willing to play with their ship and that one guy is is the exception rather than the rule so that's my thought on the situation uh, if you disagree with me leave comments or I don't know tell me that I'm a stupid ass or something because that seems to be the level of the dialogue in the community right now <laughs>